I am a unionist. I believe that the future uh, of Northern Ireland is best served by being part of the United Kingdom. I am standing as an independent candidate. I belong to no party and I will not belong to any party. If elected, I will be an independent MP, always making my decisions on the in the best interest of the people of Fermanagh and South Tyrone. I've represented the people of this constituency for over 12 years. 12 years as an MLA, nine of those years have spent as MP, and three as a Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. And I have a strong record of delivery along with representation. I believe, first of all, that this election is about leadership. It's about peace, equality, jobs, and unity. And Sinn Féin have been the driving force behind the peace process. It was Sinn Féin that ensured powers for policing and justice were transferred. We've brought equality to the heart of government and we're asking people to endorse this work to defend the peace process and to allow us to continue driving forward the process of change. We know that there are going to be massive cutbacks, cutbacks in the public sector coming down the track. And guess who's going to vote for them? Rodney Connor's going to vote for them because his best friend, David Cameron, let the mass slip at the weekend that Northern Ireland is going to be subjected to slash and burn from the Tories. And Rodney's going to vote yes. And what will Michelle Gillard you do? Well, Michelle Gillard you will do nothing because Michelle Gillard you doesn't go to Westminster. We will go to Westminster. And I would just like to ask you all one simple question tonight. Why would you vote for people who won't vote for you? Okay, folks, after those introductory remarks, uh, we now have some questions. The, as I say, we did get quite a few. The first question that I'm going to ask, or that someone is going to ask, is Dr. John Porteous, who's a GP in Lisnesky. John. In the light of the possibility of a hung parliament, as a healthcare professional working in a very busy and overstretched health service, can the candidates explain to me how they will defend healthcare provision throughout the UK against the cutbacks as threatened by Mr Cameron and suggested by others after May the 6th. Okay, Rodney Connor, how are you going to stop David Cameron cutting our health service? I think first of all, we've all got to realise that we're in a very difficult economic situation. Very hard decisions are going to have to be made. Uh, the private sector has been hit extremely hard. The public sector will have to look to see where efficiency savings can be made. In Fermanagh and South Tyrone, I was very pleased indeed to be able to coordinate the campaign to provide the new hospital for the South West. It will be located in the Niskillin. And already the impact on the, the economy, on, on the £280 million pounds capital cost, has been felt and has been a, a godsend to us all here. We have been assured that the services that were promised at the start are going to be delivered in the hospital. Uh, taking the, the doctor's point, the, the, the issues that we need to look at is to make sure that frontline services are not cut. If, if efficiencies have to, have to be found, then they will have to be found elsewhere. What I can say is that because I, first of all, will guarantee that if elected, I will be taking my seat I will be there in Westminster to fight the case. If there is a conservative, if the Conservative Party forms the government, then I will be in an even stronger position to fight for the services that I believe are right. And at all times, and it's been made clear from day one of my campaign, I will always put the interests of the people of Fermanagh and South Tyrone first. <clears throat> Fergal McKinney, the SDLP record in the past of, of fighting at Westminster, will you end up as a, a lone voice at Westminster when it comes to, to cuts? No, but can I just address the issues that brought just in relation to the question first? I mean, Rodney gets no extra points here, folks, for doing his job. Rodney was there to represent people, and that's what he's paid for. Uh, had he done anything else, then he may have been subject to certain due process. So he gets no extra value in that. The real crunch issue around the hospital 
and its delivery for the people of, of Fermanagh in particular, was that the community came together. The community decided that it needed that resource and needed it badly, and needed it funded, and needed funded and ring-fenced for the future. The first, thing at the, uh, the first item on the agenda after May the 6th is going to be the budget. And Rodney's already a hostage to fortune. I don't, I, I don't know if any of you are really interpreting that, he's saying, as believing that Rodney can stand and somehow ring fence from Alice out to Rome. The budget will be the issue. And if the budget isn't suitable for us, we'll be voting against it. David Cameron let the cat out of the bag on Friday night. Northern Ireland is going to be cut. And Rodney Connor's going to back it. Rodney Connor is going to come for your job. He's already sold that. We have, and will not sell it until we're absolutely satisfied that, that the, the sufficient budgets are secured, not just for Fermanagh South Tyrone, but elsewhere. And in terms of the hospital here, we need to make sure that the hospital works to the maximum of its capacity, that it gets the funding that it needs to continue on into the future, and isn't pressurised in any other way that it can't deliver. Of course, Michelle Gilder, you, you won't be there to fight at all. Would you consider taking your seat at Westminster to fight Northern well, Ireland's goal? Well, that's not an issue for tonight and, and it'll, if we ever do it'll be discussed privately within, amongst Sinn Féin before it's discussed on the airwaves. But just to put a few things to bed, I mean, Fergal makes much of the fact that he'll be there, but are you aware that in the last budget debate the SDLP weren't there? The debate went on for four days, they neither participated nor voted. So the SDLP's track record on this will be there isn't, isn't impressive. We me will be there 100% we'll of the time of, when it offends Northern Ireland. I didn't Northern put Ireland. in, Fergal, when you were speaking. One of your MPs had 5% turnout or, or record sorry, in think, the House of Commons. Sorry, again, I need to deal that. Again, again, your, your time you will come back. No. You can't come back. You can't come back. You can't come back. Let her finish her point. We have, like I said, Barbara De Bruyne, <laughs> when she's Minister for, for Health, delivered on the hospital in Enniskillen, recognising that the needs of the people particularly in the more marginal parts of, of, of Fermanagh, would be disadvantaged if the hospital was sited elsewhere. So she made the decision to site the hospital, the new hospital, in and around in a skillin. But the hospital's not the only part of it. And John, you asked the question, and you and I both know that the people that we look after are dependent on many, many other services. And health is not just about hospital provision, it's about <coughs> well-being, it's about your quality of life. So we need to see more investment in mental health services. We need to see more investment in suicide prevention and support for families who have children with learning disabilities or, or, or physical disabilities. So there are a huge raft of issues. And I think it's a really important question, John, and it's one I really do wonder, will our hospital that, that we did deliver, will it be turned into a health centre because the cuts are so swinging that the Tories are talking about bringing in? I just have to say, Denzel, do you not think it a bit odd that a party that says we shouldn't be going to Westminster is complaining we're not going there enough? And uh, I think Mar uh, Michelle there has just opened the door. I heard it uh, from Gerry Adams the other night. The party's about to do a U-turn on abstentionism. It's not odd at all. We're active abstentionists. We get elected on that ticket. Fergal gets... You're going to follow the to get SDLP elected. again. No, Fergal is trying to follow people like Eddie McGrady into Westminster. Their attendance record has been brutal. They take their wage, it's they take an oath, and then they don't go. At least we're honest with Listen, people. you wouldn't expect us to be going there. And there's there, another example. You're an abstentionist MP and you're arguing that we should be going there uh, voting on English, Welsh and Scottish issues. We are there 100% of the time when it comes to Northern Ireland issues, and that's where it's oh, important. You're not. Four days of the budget, you weren't there. Okay.